What bank will management should I use is still one of the most asked questions in the community. People are looking for a definitive answer, but there's just not one right answer. The only right answer is the one that works for you. So I hope in this video, by outlining the most important factors, I can help you to find that answer. I think the four most important factors determining your bank core management is field size, your ROI, which also gets influenced by field size and how tough the field is, uh, your mental game, and your lifting situation slash goals. So first, the field size. The bigger the field size, basically the higher the variance. And the higher the variance is, the bigger your swings will be. The bigger the swings you will be, the more buy-ins you will need to prevent you going broke. So if you're playing mainly on PokerStars where the fields are really, really big, 3,000 players, 5,000 players in tournaments, you want to have a little bit more buy-ins compared to when you play, for example, on Party Poker or any other side where the fields are way smaller to like hundreds or sometimes even tens. Same with like sitting goes, right? The sitting goes, they have way smaller fields and because of that, you can be a little bit more aggressive because the chance that you're going to win is just higher. Like if you're going to simplify things uh, dramatically, uh, that's not a word, drastically uh, or dramatically. I just combined them, that's funny. Um, <laughs> if you are having, for example, a nine max sit and go, so nine players, and um, everyone's equally skilled, you will win the sit and go one out of nine times. Whereas if a Tim has 5,000 runs and everyone's equally skilled uh, as well, you will win it one out of 5,000 times. So the chance you are gonna win is just way smaller and the chance you're gonna lose is because of that also does way bigger. I mean, once again, I've simplified it uh, dramatically now, um, but it does give you an idea how things change. I will be linking a poker fans calculator down below where you can play around with your ROI and the field size and see um, how big of swings are possible. So I wanted to jump in on the variance calculator that I linked down below. So for example, if we have a tournament of like 3000 players and 15% of the field gets paid, which is pretty normal nowadays, and it's a $10 buy-in with $1 rake, and you have a 15% ROI, and over a year you play 5,000 tournaments. Now if you calculate that, then this is what you get. You get a beautiful chart. Now what does this tell you? This green line is the worst run you can go on to. So you play 5,000 tournaments of an average buy of $10, you can literally go for 5,000 tournaments. You can with a 15% ROI, you can go down 22K. It's of course just an estimation. If you run, uh, if you simulate even more, you will get, you know, a different shades, of course. These are just uh, differentiations. Um, but you can also just go up 58K. Now, if you see 22K, that is just uh, quick maths divided by 10, 2,200 buy-ins down. Those swings are possible over with a 15% ROI in a 3K field. Now let's say your ROI is 50%. Let's calculate it. Then you will see that the swings are gonna be way less, uh, way, gonna be way smaller. You're gonna be down over 5K games rather than 22K, you're only gonna be down 9K. Once again, these are just estimations, um, but it does show you how things change. Now, let's say instead of a 3K tournament, is 5,000 tournament, player tournament, and once again, 15% gets paid. Once again, we have a 50% ROI. Calculating right now. Then things turn out completely different again. Then, instead of we still have 50% ROI, rather than losing 8K in a 3,000 field, we can go on a 17K downswing, and we can uh, be up 95K. So yeah, I hope that gives you an idea of how field size and uh, your ROI changes your variance, and uh, helps you determine what bank commencement is best for you. So the second most important factor is ROI, your win rate. The higher your win rate will be, the bigger the chance is that you are gonna win, right? So the bigger the chance you are gonna win, the more you're gonna win, the less buy-ins you need because the chance that you're gonna go broke is just way smaller. So you gotta be really honest with yourself and ask yourself, okay, am I really as good as I think I am? And if not, just, you know, you wanna be even more passive with your bank commencement just to prevent going broke. And with that, we come to living situation and goals. If your goal is to just have fun, 
course, just fire away. You know, if you find reloading, just fire away. But if you really want to succeed at poker, you really got to treat it as a business. And if you have a thousand dollars to invest in stocks, you also don't just buy one share of one company. You just buy a little bit of this, you buy a little bit of that. And the same as with poker, you want to spread risk. So you want to have more buy-ins to just prevent going broke. And living situation is like if you are having a 95 job on the side or just a side income to at least pay the bills, you can also of course be a little bit more aggressive because you don't have to worry and don't have to rely on your poker earnings. So it's all just, you know, gives you a little bit less, it puts less pressure on you. And with that, I want to switch over to mental game. Because I think mental game is probably the most important factor, in my opinion, when it comes to bankroll management. If I look at myself, my mental game is not always the strongest. Like, I do show up every single day, but having really big losing days, it hurts me. It, it, it affects my mood. And with that, it may also affect my play. I like to believe that's not the case. And a lot of people do believe it's not the case. I do think it always affects your play a little bit more than uh, we would like it to be the case. And because of that, I mean, it very often also just becomes, uh, comes out of just the self-pressure. I just put so much pressure on myself. I just always want to win whether, you know, I'm playing poker or I'm playing a board game with the family. I just always want to win. And it also makes me who I am and also, you know, it, it has upsides and its downsides. And with poker, it, there are a lot of downsides because it is a long-term game. There's a lot of losing. So I'm getting better at it, but, you know, I'm still working on it. And because of that, because I know it's a weak point of mine, I decided to be even more passive in my bank management just to, you know, lower the pressure on myself and just be able to be more patient and really enjoy the process rather than I got to win, I got to win, I got to win. If you don't have any struggles with that and you're just mentally really strong, you don't care if you lose 300 buy-ins, whatever, um, then, you know, just go, be, be, be more aggressive. And or like 300, of course, if you're $100, 100 buying rule, then you're broke. But unless you move down, of course, that's fine. Um, but yeah, um, it really depends on you. You really got to be honest with yourself. Am I really that good? Am I really that mental strong, mentally strong? Um, and just ask yourself, what field size does it play? How does my field look like? Is it strong? Is it weak? And uh, yeah, go from there. I always like to be on the more on the passive side myself. Just always be on the safe side. And then you can never go too wrong. So I don't really know exactly what my uh, bank or management rule is. Um, I may have a couple of hundred. I may have a couple of thousand. I just know for 100% sure that the stakes that I'm playing, I'm comfortable at. Even if I bust everything on a day. I'm comfortable with it. I, of course, don't like it at all, but I'm comfortable losing it. I don't have to worry about the money and I can just focus on improving every single day, making the best plays and to don't have to sweat day to day. And uh, yeah, I hope those four factors helps to determine your bank management and I hope we can settle this, uh, this topic for once and for all. If you guys have any questions, please let me know down below. One of the questions somebody had actually was, what about mixed games? Um, with mixed games, you want to be also more passive because with mixed games, there's even more variance because hand strengths are even closer together. So you never weigh ahead or way behind. And because of that, variance just, you never just weigh ahead. So variance just um, becomes greater. And once variance becomes greater, you want to be more passive because the chance that you're going to lose is just higher. Um, another one is cash games. I've never played cash games myself. Uh, a lot of... People, this is what a lot of people told me, you want to have at least 30 buy-ins. And of course, that is 30 buy-ins of the max buy-in. And with Timmons, with efforts buy-in, I'm always talking about 100 buy-ins. I'm talking about efforts buy-in. So if you have a $1,000 bankroll, you want to have at least $10 efforts buy-in. So it's fine to place on 22s, as long as you also place on 550s and 330s to lower the efforts buy-in to like around 10. But once again, they're just guidelines. I like to always be on the safe side, lowers the pressure. You don't have to sweat it like, oh, I got to play this. Um, for some people, that's great, actually. You know, for some people, uh, if they play one $22, it becomes really uh, easy for them to play another one and another one and another one. And they just get too caught up in the grind to chase the losses or whatever. And for those people, I really recommend to just, you know, open a, a spreadsheet and just really just write down what terms you want to play and uh, stick to it so you don't get caught up in it 
And for other people, I really just recommend just go on the safe side, lower the pressure, enjoy the process, focus on improving. If you're on a downswing, move down the stakes, regain confidence, spend more time um, off the table as well to work on your game, to regain confidence. And uh, yeah, I think if you follow those advices, if you follow those factors, I think you should be able to um, you know, come up with a good bankroll management and uh, yeah, grind it up and um, yeah, have fun in the game. Once again, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe and uh, I'd love to see you guys again in the next video.